Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and in this video I'm going to show you a way of working with Skylum's uh, Aurora HDR software and combining that with Luminar. So what we're going to do is I have a couple of images here that are bracketed so we're going to combine them into a HDR image and then I'm going to sh show you how to use the plugin system that's actually in Aurora HDR that will let you send that uh, combined image then to Luminar. So um, I have a couple of bracketed images here. Um, it's just kind of a landscape shot. Now, one of the things with HDR is, uh, as I'm sure you're well aware, HDR kind of has a bad reputation of being kind of over stylized and so on. Um, but there are some advantages to it. Um, by combining HDR images, even when it's not strictly necessary, you can kind of, um, you can increase the dynamic range in your image and you can increase kind of, you just basically increase the amount of data that you have to work with. So in this case, uh, I could probably get away with processing just a single image, um, but I'm going to combine the three anyway, um, and then we'll just kind of play around with it and see what we can come up with. So these are kind of images I shot a while ago, and this was what a, a Canon um, 5D Mark II, so this is from about eight years ago. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by um, dropping these onto Aurora HDR. So I'm actually in Capture One at the moment. Um, and this doesn't really matter what software you're starting off with. Uh, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be sending the raw files to Aurora. And from Capture One to do this, you simply just select them here. So I have the three selected and I'm just going to drop them onto Aurora HDR in the dock. So this will bring up the um, merge dialog box. So what we want to do is select alignment. Um, I'm pretty sure this was shot on a tripod, but I'm not 100% certain, so I'm gonna leave this on anyway. So then I want ghost reduction because there's some movement in the water, so we want to get rid of that. And then also because I'm using raw files, I want to turn chromatic aberration on. So we just hit that and then hit create HDR. So what this is doing now is it's going to merge the HDR files into a single tone mapped image, and then we can play around with that. Okay, so what this has done now, it has merged the files and we are here in Aurora HDR. So we can start by um, just doing some basic edits and see how we get on. So uh, if we go over to the controls here, um, first of all, we, we're just going to increase the contrast a bit and I'm going to bring down the highlights. I don't want to go too far and then just bring up the shadows a bit. And I'm going to hit the HDR enhance slider. Now, I don't want to go too far with this because this is where we start getting into the kind of stereotype HDR image that's kind of overly processed. And I don't want I don't want to go for that. I want to kind of keep this as natural as possible. OK, so again, uh, I'm going to increase the vibrance just a little bit and the saturation a bit. OK, and then we have down here we have um, HDR structure, so we kind of just give this a little bit of this just to bring some detail in. Um, so my kind of goal here is just to basically get the most uh, kind of um, tone extraction out of this image as I can. So I want to basically have as much data to work with for when I send it to Luminar. So if you're wondering why am I going to send it to Luminar in the first place? Well, um, it's because there's actually more tools that I can use in Luminar and uh, it gives you a greater degree of flexibility. So again, I'm kind of just doing some very basic edits here. I want to keep uh, I want to keep it as natural looking as possible. So I could keep going here and do lots of different things, but what I want to do is show you how to then use um, the plugin system in Aurora to send this to Luminar. So it's actually really straightforward. If I go up here to plugins and just hit Luminar, what this will do is it will create a a new layer and send that layer to Luminar. And then when you're finished, you can uh, you just save it like you would use um, Luminar as a plugin with Lightroom, for example, and it will send it back to Aurora and then you kind of keep everything in the one document, which is kind of handy. OK, so now we have the combined image here in Luminar. We can do lots of different things here. I could use, say, one of my presets, for example, which is probably a bit over the top. Uh, but I might just tone this back a bit. Um, OK, so I'm going to add a new layer. A new adjustment layer. And I'm going to turn these off just to get out of the way. And then we're going to just add a few things. 
So I'm going to start by using the Accent AI filter, which is the kind of um, artificial intelligence based filter. And even at that, that's kind of looking good. Um, and then I'm going to add, let me see, I'm going to add an Orton effect. So this kind of hopefully will blend some of the excessive detail together and just kind of create a nice overall look. Um, and then if I wanted to say do a film look, I could use say a matte look filter. But that's probably going a bit too far. Yeah, no, we don't want that. So I'm going to get rid of that and let's see what else we can use. This is actually looking pretty okay as it is. Like, so even there's where we started and there's where we're kind of finishing up. What I might do is I'm going to say add a polarizing filter. Just kind of increase the sky a little bit and I'm going to drag this back before the Orton effect. Let's see what else can we do. I'm going to add dodge and burn and I'm just going to increase the size of this and I'm going to just lighten over here a little. Okay. Um, yeah, this just brought that up just a, enough to make that because that was kind of off balance and it was kind of putting me off a bit. Um, I think overall the saturation is probably a little too high, so I'm just going to add one more layer, and I'm going to add some. I'm just going to bring the vividness down ever so slightly because it's gone a bit too, it's too kind of luminous for my liking. Um, I could try, say, the golden hour, for example, and make kind of everything a bit red, but again, that starts to veer into the ridiculous looking artificial territory, so we don't want that. Um, maybe some image radiance. With a lot of these filters, you kind of need to keep the values low, otherwise it starts to look very fake looking. Um, but that's quite good. So again, so if we, that's where we started. So you can see we've kind of just kind of created a nice blend of everything together. Um, I can try one last thing and I might just do a little bit of vignette. Just kind of to focus the attention a bit. And I think that kind of works. So again, here's our before and here's our after. So before, after. Okay, so once you've done that, now there's a couple of things you can do. If you want to actually save the Luminar file, you can just hit save here and give it a file name. Um, but if you want to just then send this back to uh, Aurora, all you just do is hit apply. So this has now added that in as a new layer. So again, that's before and that's after. So now then, if you want to, you can just save this um, Aurora file and it will keep both layers intact. So the only disadvantage of this is if I go to call this again, so if I hit Luminar again, what it's going to do is it'll actually duplicate this layer. So it's not, it doesn't keep the editability of the Luminar layer, which is kind of a pain. Um, it's something I wish they did do. But uh, it, unfortunately, they don't at the moment. So as you can see, I just have a new flat image. It's not, I don't have any of the layers or anything. So that is kind of one of the reasons you want to, you might want to save the Luminar file as well. So just while I'm back here, there's one last thing I want to do. And that is, there's a couple of dust spots up here. So we're going to get rid of them. Um, and to do that, we'll just go into Erase. And then want to just click on the dust spots. And... Let me just zoom in so we can see them. I think that's actually all of them. Oh, oh there's one. I knew I missed one. <laughs> okay, so that is actually all of them. So then I just hit erase. And the spots are gone. And just hit done. Get out of the erase mode. And again, I just hit apply to send it back to uh, to Aurora. And then this will load it now as another new layer. So this way we kind of keep everything um, as layers. As I said, it would be better. I would prefer it personally if they kept the Luminar as a, an actual Luminar file, a link to it, um, that you could then keep the individual layers. But maybe that's something that might add in the future. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's how you use Aurora HDR and Luminar together using Luminar as a plugin for um, Aurora. Um, and all I do now to finish this is I would just save the file. Um, 
So I'd, I'd save it as an Aurora file and then export it as, say, a TIFF and then re-import it back into Capture One or whatever other software you're using to manage your files. Um, so just one more time then, here is the original file that we brought in. And here is the finished one after we've edited it in um, both Aurora HDR and Luminar. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. If you like this, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and share it if you think uh, you might think other people might like to see it. Um, and once again, thanks for watching. See you next time.